Hey folks, you know, years ago I was just looking to see, I published this in January of 2015. So basically eight years ago, I published this book called Making a Ripple, the 2x4 Canoe. Now in it, I detailed how to rip quarter inch wide planks from cedar 2x4s, 16 footers, and bend them around these forms that I designed to basically have a planked canoe. And it worked well, well enough to write a book on it, and, and several people have made the canoes. I've made five of them myself, and they do work well, but, you know, life's a learning process, so over the years, I started thinking there has to be an easier way to do that. A lot of the work involved as far as ripping these quarter inch planks and then running each one through a planer and trying to get them all exactly uniform and then trying to get an inch and a half wide plank to bend in the two directions that it needs to bend to conform to this hole shape made it a little bit uh, not as easy as it could be and not quite as light as it could be. So I started thinking, you know, what if I, instead of using two by fours, I used four millimeter marine plywood. In this case, it's okume, which is very light, but also very strong. And it's wonderful stuff to work with. So I figured out that probably the widest I could go with a plywood that's pretty stiff, so it doesn't want to bend this way like it it should too much. An inch wide is as wide as I could go. So on each of these eight foot strips then, I made a scarf joint, which is just a very shallow angle. And I wood glue and spring clamp the two planks to get their strips together to make a 16 footer that then bends around the frames. So there's still some distortion, you know, you still have to finagle them a little bit and I use these little, little uh, just uh, craft sticks that I cut with hot glue, just make little tabs. Wherever it needs a little persuasion to lay flat one on top of the other without any displacement. But it's easy enough and I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I've made, I've completed one side now. So the next step then is to make, once both sides are stripped out, is to do the bottom panels. Now my cedar strip canoes or cedar planked canoes, I use planks on the bottom. Well, this I'm simplifying by just using the plywood panels. And I realized that each panel that's two feet by eight feet, I can rip seven inches off this and still have enough to cover eight feet of the bottom. And then with what I cut off, I will attach to these eight footers and finish off the stems. So I can complete the bottom with one sheet of four millimeter Okume plywood with 14 inches of plywood to spare. So that's kind of what I wanted to show you today. I'm not going to get into details on how I construct this. I'm going to over the winter write a book on how to do it and I'll do some other videos along the way. But what I wanted to show you today is how I form my scarf joints. I made a jig using this circular saw and all that and it didn't work that well. It, it was just, it, the edges were jagged, it was too hard to make them uniform. So I came up with a method just using my belt sander. So I'm going to show you how to scarf, make a scarf joint on four millimeter which is awful thin, okume. So I have them setting on a piece of three quarter inch plywood and then back 
towards the back here I have a, another piece of three quarter inch wood to keep them flat and then I have them sitting on a roller stand off the back. So I took a piece of blue masking tape and I taped the edge, the leading edge of that three quarter inch plywood just so I have an indicator as I start to make my scarf joints I'll be able to see when I get down to that blue masking tape. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking a little scrap of okume, one of my strips, and I'm measuring back two and three quarter inches back from the edge and you know making sure that this leading edge is is completely square with the edge of the plywood. And then I'm just going to use some panel nails. and tack that what basically becomes kind of a guide. Now I'll do one more on each side. Those little nail holes really don't show up on the canoe. Okay, so that has made this pretty firm so that the Plywood lays pretty flat against this bait. So I just have a 3 by 18 inch belt sander. This is a skill. And it's probably my third or fourth belt sander, but I'm pleased with this little bugger. It works really well. And it's a fairly new 80 grit belt on there that I just used to make the scarf joints on the two 24 inch wide by eight foot long okume panels that I did this to that I ended up ripping my one inch strips from. But if you can see, ooh, it's windy, maybe on, on this edge, right here there's this metal part of the base that sticks out from the edge of the belt. And so that little edge just fits on that strip of okume that I tacked on there. So basically all we're going to do then is just keep working our way back and forth across this piece, just keeping that angle right and just watch it. Then you watch the laminates of the plywood and try to keep them fairly uniform and kind of watch it on each end because that's where you tend to get a little more aggressive and not quite as much in control so the ends tend to get get eaten up a little faster than in the center. So I'll get started here. As you can see what I was telling you about when you on the ends this one's already starting to get where it needs to be a little sooner so I need to practice what I preach. But I'll show you what it looks like here so far. So as you can see where the laminates are it's starting to give us a nice guide. So we'll just keep working it here till we get finished. I'm getting close. I'm getting where I'm getting another line from another laminate starting to form along the edge. 
And I'm getting close to hitting the tape, but just not quite there yet. I say I'm right, right about there. There you have it. Pretty darn nice scarf joint. So, so I ended up with, out of those two seven inch pieces of okume that I scarf joined, I ended up with 12 one inch by eight, in, eight foot strips that I'll join together. I'll end up with six of the 16 foot strips. So there's an inevitable waste, you know, you, you subtract the width of the saw with every cut that you make so these little strips would probably be handy for something actually I could probably scarf join these together and have a really nice batten which I need a full-length batten for sweeping the arc for cutting the side panels anyways that'll be darn okay well I already have a batten but anyways boy Cutting little strips like this when you start getting close to the saw, please, by all means, use a feather board. It just makes it so much safer. So, I'll join these together and we'll start working on the other side of this canoe. So, until next time, it's Mark again with Backwood Basics. So let's, let's join together. <laughs> <laughs>